All right there, welcome to Family Man Freedom. Today we are going to go over how to get the stickers on those books that we got at the library sale, and also how to put them in a box, what to print, things like that. So very first thing we're gonna do is jump over to our Amazon inventory. So hopefully by this point, maybe you've gotten some books just to test this out. It does take a little bit of time to get the Amazon Seller Central set up. So I do recommend that you get started on that earlier rather than later. Again, the couple tools that I found speed up the process dramatically. It's gonna be Scout IQ and also one of these uh, Bluetooth scanners. It allows you to just go so much faster. Bluetooth scanner, I think it's around 40 bucks. Um, Scout IQ does have a 14 day uh, trial so you can go ahead and get that going the link for both of those affiliate links for both of those will be down below uh, lastly you know I am NOT making enough from this yet to be able to pay for the professional version of Amazon after going through this today to prep for this video I think I might bulk up how many books I get and then pay for it and move on because I think uploading a CSV will considerably speed up the process here. It just takes so much time to list books like we showed in the in the last video. Uh, I believe I'm sh sending out 68 books uh, today. So that'll be a good amount to, if they sell through well, like I hope they do, it should create enough revenue to do a couple of things. Maybe buy a thermal printer, which will also speed up this process. Maybe do professional for a month after I bulk up some more books to send out. Just trying to work through the process. I am working on a way to automate the process even without the professional version. Uh, well, and I'll get back on that another day. Okay, so we're in here. Um, I sent, I did all this process with the previous batch. So you can see how I have a couple that are done here in different ways. So I, right now I have 35 books selected. Again, if you're new to Family Man Freedom, our goal here is to help dads spend more time with their family and their kids. This is a $100 challenge where we start off with $100 and we're trying to see what we can make a business out of it. Now, the key part of this business is that it doesn't require much skill set. And also, once you get things listed, it's time independent. So the time to get it all set up can happen at any time you want, not during your regular working hours. And then once it's sent off to Amazon, at that point, then the sales just happen. So it's time independent to hopefully give you some more freedom of time to spend with your kids. If you can turn this into something that makes enough money for you to quit your day job, that's great. If it just gives you enough money to maybe put your boy in Boy Scouts or put your girls in soccer camp or whatever it is, that's great. But the goal of Family Man Freedom is family and to spend more time with family. Give your wife a break, spend time with your kids. If you like what we're talking about here, go ahead and give the video a like, it helps it so other people get send this information. First thing we're gonna do, we've selected the ones that we want to send off. It says action on 35 items. I already checked, I have the 35 books right here. I'm gonna select there and I'm gonna go to send and replenish inventory. It shows my different things there the prices I've picked and all that stuff. And we will click yes to continue. Now Amazon backend isn't the fastest. So that's one of the reasons why uploading the CSV will considerably speed up the time for this. So when we get to this, since we're not in professional, we have to do this one by one. I was looking at some previous videos from other people and it seems like there used to be a ability to put one in all of these, but there's not. So I'm gonna start going through it. You'll see how long it takes for each one and then I will speed up the process. So first off, you have to click here. You have to say, since these are books, they have no prep needed and we need to save. And then we wanna label it. You can choose to have Amazon label, but I think it's like 35 cents per label or something like that. And what we've done is we go out and we've purchased these 30 up labels. Let me just blow this up real quick. These 30 up labels from Avery. 
because uh, right now this is what we can afford to do as far as for that. If we can get a thermal printer, that speeds up the process considerably. So we will go through this. We are going to push save. Now the next thing we also need to do is put a one on there and then we need to push ready to pack. And now we can go to the next step with that one. We have to do that for every single item. What I've noticed speeds up my process a little bit is if I click through these ones, you, you just got to get through. So save, save. Okay. And then you put a one here. So the first thing you need to do is we're going to go through, I'm going to make sure the not prep prep is not required part is filled out for all of them. So I'll speed you through this part of the video. All right, actually what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pause the recording, get through these, and then we'll move on to the next step. All right, so we got through that first part. Now we have to do with these units. What I've noticed is if I can just get these and start pushing one in them and fill up quite a bit, and then I'll come do the other part later. So I guess trying to batch inside of what's happening here is what was working best for me. So then once we've done that, we're gonna go and we're gonna push the ready to pack on as many of them as we can. Maybe by the way that it moves, going from the bottom up will be better because then they're not gonna, the ones above won't move, the ones below will move. So you can click more at once. Okay, so I have 35 units that have been done to that step. So these ones are now ready to go. So I have this option right here, print all SKU labels. So I'm gonna push there. Now, again, I'm using these 30 up labels right here. Now these ones are 30 up if we can see right here on the screen, we're going to go print all. That's gonna download to my thing. We're gonna save that with labels. All right, now once we have these labels, that label file, let me see, I'll open up the label file and you'll see what we have. All right, so this is the label file. So we can see there's one page and two pages. Now there's an issue with this last page because these aren't really super cheap um, labels. And so the question is, they're gonna give it to me in this way, but I might have a couple that have, let me see, I have one here that has a bunch more labels. These were ones that messed up. And then I have a bunch of labels here. So can I reuse this? So I did figure out a way, which we'll do right now, where I'm gonna be able to move those five to print over in one of these other open spaces so we don't waste our labels. So first thing we're gonna do is print the first label. All right, so to print these labels, what I'm gonna do is I'm only gonna print the first page because I am going to, so I'm just gonna go custom, just print one page. And then that's all I need for this. So then all I have to do is push print and it's gonna send that to my printer. Now I've, I just have a laser printer. I found that the laser printers are much better than the inkjet for this. Personally, I just don't like the ink jets. I don't print in color enough for it to make sense for me to have to buy magenta so I can print in black. So I just decided to buy a Canon laser printer. I think it was a hundred bucks. I'll put a link to that below too. Uh, if you want to get the same one, it's been great. It comes with like a sample toner cartridge that already has 800 prints in it. So that's a lot of prints already. I just recently had to buy a new toner cartridge, which is $84, I believe it was 80 some dollars but it has like 2000 prints. So that's way cheaper than any inkjet's gonna be. 
and I select the quality better. So I'll we'll get right back to you after I print these. All right, so we got that printed and it comes out looking like this, nice and pretty. It always, camera wants to find a face, so there you go. Um, now, here's the issue. I have these other five and I don't wanna be wasteful. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab one of my ones, say like this, that has a bunch of blank ones on it and I'm gonna make it happen. So here is a little trick. Now, uh, if you're good with Photoshop or the, uh, those Adobe products, this will definitely work in those. I don't really want, I don't do Photoshop stuff, but I found a software that's probably just as powerful as Photoshop, but is a little bit different. Now it's called Affinity. Uh, so I'll put the link down to the Affinity Suite. The good thing about the Affinity Suite is you buy, you like how software used to be, you just buy it once and you get all the updates and all that stuff instead of having to completely resubscribe. So I'm gonna open up Affinity Publisher. All right, so here we are in Affinity Publisher and let me move myself over to this other side. Now what I can do with this is I can go and I can file, I will open a recent, I'm gonna open the Avery labels. So with the Avery labels, not sure why that's not showing up. I guess it's in a different screen. So I have something that says I can load all the pages and push okay. I'm gonna open up the Avery labels. Now what we can see is that those Avery labels are right there. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna also open up that file that I just downloaded. So we'll go to file, open, Okay, so we finally got the other labels in. Now what we can see is we have the, that layer and we have this layer. Once we have this page, we can take the crop tool and we can make a crop of what we want. And then we can copy it with Control C, jump over here. Now if I just put it right there, it's going to become part of that layer. I don't want that. So what I want to do is I'm going to create a new layer, layer one, and I'm going to paste it. Now that, if we look, that all came under layer one. So I'm going to move this down. Now there's a reason if I put under layer two, then I can't make all those, uh, all the lines from the template go away. So at this point, I can make those lines from the template go away. I'm going to go up here to file, I have the little print dialog box right here. I'm gonna go to print. Everything looks great and lined up. So I'm gonna go ahead and put my labels in and print this out and I'll be right back. Okay, so we printed it out and if you see, it made it so it's right there on those one missing spots. Now. The reason I had to figure out how to do this was because on my super limited budget, sometimes like I would send 22 books and then I have a paper with just eight sitting there. And I'm like, well, how do I use those eight? I wanna be able to use up all of them. After we have these printed, the next step is to label all the books, try to fit them in the box once they have their labels on, and then we need to weigh the box. Now you can't send a box that's over 50 pounds, but we're charged on how much something weighs. So. Personally, since I'm not using a really exact scale, I'm using just a regular scale. That's another thing I would probably buy if I had if I had a little bit extra was a more exact scale, like what they're using at UPS and an Amazon. But right now I'm giving myself like maybe an extra pound because I'm not sure how far this thing is off. It hasn't been that far, but it hasn't been correct either. So next step, label books. If I'm gonna label this book here, now, what we can see is it has that ISBN right there. What can't be there is any of that barcode. So first I'm gonna go find that book. All right, there we go. We got our sticker. Remember, you need to t cover all barcodes. So even if there's three barcodes, you gotta figure out how to cover three barcodes. So sometimes you will use like little clippings of stickers and things like that. So I'm covering this one up.
and there you go. That one's ready to go. All right, so this one, Christmas songs, jazz, piano. Now, if you notice, this one has a couple barcodes at the end, so you can decide which one you want to cover up. Um, I guess it doesn't really matter. This is another place where I'm going to be able to use some of my extra random stickers. I'll just get a blank one and I'm going to use some scissors. I'm going to cut it to about the right size that I need. And then I'll probably have to use the other half of that somewhere anyway. So I got a little sticker. And we are going to just cover up that little bit of barcode. Okay, so from what it was to what it is now, I covered up covered up that barcode. And then that's the one for Amazon. It's done. So I'm just gonna go through, I'm gonna label all these, and then I'll get back to you after that. That took a little bit of time, but look what we got done. We have all of these books listed right here. They are listed, they are stickered. I taped up the box and I got them all in the box. Now, as far as for how we're fitting them in the box and, uh, and covering all that, we'll cover that in another video because that's kind of like its own thing um, on resizing boxes and stuff like that. So we got everything set up. Now, just a quick tip, if you didn't know, the very first box that I sent in, it disappeared. So what I did with this box, I mean, by disappeared, I mean that it got, according to the tracking, all the way to Amazon's parking lot. The truck got checked in, but it never got checked into inventory. I have no idea what happened. So I have two boxes. What I chose to do is go through the list of the books, which is why in the beginning, why they were kind of weirdly checkmarked. And I went by value and I staggered them, which ones went in each box is maybe a little bit paranoid, but I've only sent in three, four boxes of books and the very first one never showed up. So with this one, since I'm sending in two boxes, I chose to stagger the value I didn't want to put all the expensive books in one and that be the one that got lost, whatever. Don't know if I'll do that in the future, but since I'm just getting started here, it was important for me to do that. So we got all of these checked in. They got, they're in a box, box is taped up. There's only one more. I weighed the box, it's 44.4 pounds. And now we just move on to the next step. Pack individual units. We're gonna say everything fit into one box. We're gonna confirm that. Our dimensions are 11 by 11 by 17. You don't notice the original box is 11 by 13 by 17. But once I had all the boxes, books in the box, there was a lot of space. So I can either fill that space with something else or I can cut down the box to fit the proper size. It's super easy. Uh, basically, you just cut up the corners and fold in at the height that you want. So I did that. I'll have a separate video showing that in a little bit. And my box weight, it was 44.4. So I'm going to put 45 pounds. And let's see. Confirm packing information. One box. Those are the sizes. Confirm packing information. Okay, confirm and continue. Now this is where they decide where I'm gonna ship it. Now, I choose to do one box at a time. I've never done more than one box at a time uh, in this system, but I've been told that if it can be put into two boxes, what they what they're they're gonna decide which one goes in which box and it could possibly be sent to two different locations. I'm gonna send this today. And it's gonna be small parcel delivery. And it's coming in at, where, they, where am I sending it? Same place as the other box, I guess that's good. And it's 1123. 
we can accept the charges. So there's 35 books in there. If we do 11.23 cost per book is gonna be Eleven point two three divided by thirty-five. It's thirty-two cents a book. That's pretty cheap shipping. All right, so we accepted that. We are not going to do thermal printing. We are going to do the U.S. letter printing because the thermal printing. I don't have a thermal printer yet. Once I do, that's the way I'll do it. And we will go print so this is the thermal print file right here I'm blurring out sensitive information and right here I just go print again there's the Canon MF all pages copies I'm gonna make sure it's the right size yep we're gonna go print All right, I'm gonna go pick that up from the printer. All right, so here it is. There's the printout, what I wanna send off. So what you're gonna do is basically you're just gonna take that whole sheet. I take it over to the UPS store. It's already paid for for UPS, UPS ground. So basically I just take this to them the box they weigh it to double check they fold this up and they ship it off so it's paying on Amazon for the UPS shipping all right next step pretty much we're most of the way there so I'm just gonna go ahead and close that and from there we view tracking details we told them when we were gonna send it gonna send it today and then we just go ahead and we take it over there and they ship it off. So that's how we pack, sticker, and ship. From here on, it's just a matter of taking a box that's filled over to the UPS store. So that's pretty much it. I'll have another video. You can go ahead and what I would like you to do is if, if this is the first video that you've seen from us, we're doing a series on a $100 challenge to start a business. And the business is selling used books on Amazon FBA. So you can check out this video right here if you want to see like the beginning, like the kickoff of this, or right here will be the playlist of all the videos we have so far on this and also to teach you how to do this step by step. All right, take care. Remember Family Man Freedom is all about helping dads spend more time with their kids. One of those main ways is by giving time independence to the way money is being made. And that's where this $100 challenge comes up. Take care.